Hello, hola y marhaba. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel, Cobra Dude. Uh, today we're going to be doing a really cool model. It's the Thorn Guard Captain here in the Baratheon Attachments box set. Uh, I believe I only have one more left in this Attempting to Paint series for just the Baratheon box set. I'm really excited for this and by the time I believe that this video comes out, it's actually going to be Christmas. So I'm wishing you a Merry Christmas. If you celebrate, Happy Holidays, and thank you for watching. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And also follow me on Instagram at Cobra's Finest with a Z. So in my video, I made a mistake. It's actually the Pikeman. Captain. Pikeman Captain. So here we have the Pikeman Captain. So as you can see, I primed him. I might have missed some spots, but I think that's going to be okay. So we're going to start off with the green portions of this guy. Um, <clears throat> I think that's going to be the, the fun part to do. Because that's going to be the part that has the most uh, things that we're going to do. And then we'll work from there. So, of course, we're going to use Warp Lightning Green. You turn on that light. Sorry for the shaky camera. And again, these, I can't speak highly enough of how cool these models are. Um, I, again, I, as I said, for the Sentinel, uh, for whatever this thing called, the Thorn Guard Sentinel, these, I, I think that these gonna, these are going to be, um, auto-includes in any Renly faction. Uh, this one in particular, this one... As I said, has Dauntless, which uh, allows them... Let me just make sure. Yeah, each time this unit passes a morale test, it may restore up to one wound. And again, I mean, this for the... You know, the, the, the Rose Knights is going to just just wreck face. I can see them also be in, an, in a unit of Sentinels or Wardens. It doesn't necessarily need to be in in rose knights but i feel that the rose knights are going to be the ones that take the absolute are going to be the absolute best with them because of their uh their already inherent mechanic of just replenishing wounds after they yeah i don't remember how that goes i, I but you know that healing factor is just you know again you know as i've said before uh, the Renly faction, in many ways, is a much, much more forgiving faction than, say, the Stannis faction, because of the fact that they have these healing mechanics that, you know, you can, you know, mess up on a on a wound, on a on a charge or have like subpar dice rolls and still come out on top. As opposed to like Stannis, where sometimes the 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 Red God is not with you, and all of a sudden you're 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 not in doing you're not doing so hot, you know. Even with things like Mel that can like really do some some damage on people, you know. I've seen you know bat reps where Mel doesn't do anything, and so you're basically just taking out all these wounds on yourself, and then. For the for the supposed payoff not to happen is kind of you know alarming, and you know one of the things I love about this model is like it's got so many plumes, it's so delicate, it's so you know as opposed, I mean, you know one of the things I always give Simon for or you know whoever makes these models, um, I I really have to give them the fact that they're always having the models take the character of like the faction that they belong to right so you have rose knights for example and because they're from high garden they have like these like you know super ornate armor and just 
really just chatting it up, you know what I mean? Just just looking absolutely amazing. You know, as opposed to like, you know, the Stannis units, which are, you know, very low frills or, you know, as the, the R'hllor faithful, they look badass, but, you know, um, they're a bunch of religious zealots, so they don't really care <laughs> about like what they look like. So they look like a bunch of, you know, uh, you know, someone that you would see in the street corner screaming that the end is nigh. So, I mean, I think that that's a pretty cool, you know, example of, like, you know, a, a game that really knows it's the, the property that it's using and really just crafting a world in that in that way. Again, in, in my opinion, you know, you might you might really like how the uh, how our R'hllor, the R'hllor faithful look and, you know, might be offended by how I'm talking about it. So here you go. See? And so the cool thing about this green is that even though it's a pretty bright, we're going to be able to dull it down a little bit when uh, when we put the wash over it. Now we're going to go and get Lead Belcher. Give that a little shaky shake. And we're going to, in the immortal words of Duncan Rhodes, thin our paints. Um, who I must admit, I'm so happy that he's painting uh, A Song of Ice and Fire miniatures. It's so great to watch him work. Uh, sorry, I just got really intense right now. Sorry. <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, I, I mean, again, like I said before, these just models are just so intricate that if you are a non-barbarian like myself that's just trying to get these things painted and on the board, you could really just go insane with them and just really just show what you're capable of and you know again like this is one of those models uh, you know again a high garden model or a you know Renly model that really just accentuates like how cool you know and how you know just kind of shows like their na naivete of battle <laughs> you know like I, you know if you remember that scene where Catelyn um is meeting with Renly, um, you know, spoiler alert, I guess, uh, <laughs> um, you know, she calls the, 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 the warriors of Highgarden and all that stuff that were having like a mini tourney, you know, that they're, that they're, that they're warriors of summer, you know, and I think this just encapsulates that, like this, like, you know, these frilly kind of warriors gowns or warrior outfits. And yet, you know, they just put a lot of damage on the table, you know, and I think that's something that, see, so we're almost done here. We just got to put, we're going to do the helmet. Let me get some more lead belch. You know, and true to form, like I said in my, when my, when I did the video for the thorn guard, <clears throat> You know, I, I, I figured I was going to end up loving painting these guys. And sure enough, man, these guys were actually a lot of fun to paint. And I'm really enjoying it. So now we're painting the the helmet, the helm. Um, inside, I'm just going to paint the inside. Um, once uh, this, this the lead belcher dries, I'm going to put um, Black Templar Black. And we're going to just make that look more deeper because it's already, it's filled in already. And I just, you know, just easier that way. And then I don't know if you can see, but homeboy's got a scarf on, you know, everyone knows that you need to have your tactical scarf before you go to battle. Um, gotta love high garden. But, you know, I, I remember when I was in the military, I never left anywhere without my scarf. So, you know, hey, you got to make sure that scarf is there. Um, or is that an ascot? Hmm. Well, I guess we'll never know. Um, so we're just going to paint green on the bottom here just to, for conformity's sake. And thankfully, uh, this model is actually, these are gloves. He's wearing gloves. So when we do the brown... The leather, we're going to put them all over. Uh, and before we 
do that. I think for these, this guys, we're gonna do. Um, we're actually gonna do wild, wildwood, wildwood on everything now for the rest of uh, for the rest of this stuff. Uh, the the leather and his boots, because of the fact that I don't want to use. Uh, I was gonna use Le uh, Gilliman's flesh, but I feel like because of the face i i don't want to cuz the face is so pronounced i don't want to have his face look like leather and so we're going to just use a darker a darker brown for the leather and this belt over here we're going to do we're going to do wildwood brown because it's just such a dark brown that we it gives it just a good um contrast perfect make sure I get that because don't want to be you know confusing tactical footwear with his tactical scarf so And again, as I've said before, I'll say it again because it bears repeating. Uh, don't freak out if you don't put, if you go and you put some, uh, what's it called? Um, there's some stray paint brushes, some stray paint on the base. That happens to the best of us. Some more than others, aka me. That's me. I'm others. You know, um, that's why I, I started basing my models because... I got embarrassed with the, uh, <laughs> with, uh, the stray paint marks. And I found that that is a, a very efficient way to, 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 to make your models look awesome, but also fix a mistake that you might not be too proud of. See? And so right now in California, it's finally getting cold and no more fire season, which is, always a welcomed addition it's always welcome to see no more fire season um yeah. so let me see what are we gonna use oh. ronox hide you know another thing that we can use instead of ronox hide we could also use the mornfang brown that we used for our horse but for today we're gonna use the mornfang brown i think that's gonna be a better situation. Uh oh, that's too similar. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to end up having to use the Morning Fang Brown. Okay. I don't want that to be... I don't want it to look too, too similar. So we're going to just do the Morning Fang Brown. There should be a break, right? It should be clear what you're painting and what you're, what you were painting and what were you trying to get. Let me take some of that paint out so we can see the fingers. There you go. <sighs> Woo! Crisis averted. Okay, and so the next piece we're going to do is we're going to do the face. Again, attempting to do the face in keeping with our ch my channel's attempting <laughs> Yeah, this is a very, uh, faces are usually a very particularly awful thing for me. 
you know, that's one of the reasons why I love Space Marines back when I played 40k, because, oh man, was it so much easier to paint. <laughs> it was just great. Now I'm looking for my Black Templar Black, because he's got nice black hair, a man of my own heart. I do love it. And so then we're going to start from front to back. I'm debating giving him a little bit of a salt and pepper kind of look, but I don't know. Perfect. Ha! All right. I'll take it. And then we got to just put Black Templar inside the helmet. Uh oh. Okay. Whew. Okay. Now we're going to do the same technique as I did for the white on the Sentinel. We're going to first put some, uh, we're going to paint over some of the last parts so it doesn't look like I just got lazy and didn't want to prime any, I uh, didn't want to paint anymore. And so, you know, again, if you want your whites to be just brilliant white, you know, you don't have to put the shade over them. Um, you could just leave it like that. Uh, I might, for these partic for this particular model, I might just do that. So what you're going to use is the Celestial, the Celestia Gray and... Um, and just paint over everything and then once that dries you can paint over it with um uh the white the ceramite white so i'm gonna wait till it's painted over and then i'm gonna finish this model off screen with the white to let it paint to let the paint dry and then i'll bring it back and here we have the completed project thanks for watching remember to like share and subscribe